My name is Elizabeth Warren, and I'm the chair of the Congressional Oversight Panel. I'm here to introduce our sixth monthly report, where we look at the federal government's efforts to increase lending to small businesses and households. One of the main reasons behind the creation of the $700 billion Troubled Asset Relief Program, or TARP, last fall was the belief that quick action was needed to unfreeze credit. Our economy relies on spending by small businesses and consumers, and many small businesses and consumers rely on credit so that they can spend. Today, however, small businesses are experiencing great difficulty in accessing credit, with about 40% of bankers saying they have raised lending standards. Household lending has contracted somewhat at an annual rate of about 3.5 percent, mostly in credit cards, not car loans and student loans. So the Treasury Department has designed a program to loosen up credit using the TALF, which stands for Term Asset Backed Securities Loan Facility. Try saying that three times fast. Uh, the program is supposed to make it easier for banks to pool together loans made to small businesses and households and then sell pieces of those pools to investors. The pieces sold to investors are called securities and the TALF program is supposed to encourage investors to buy more of those securities from the banks. In the years before the crisis, banks and non-bank financial institutions used securitization to remove loans from their balance sheets and to take in cash which gave these institutions another way to finance lending. This also gave the institutions an incentive to make as many loans as possible to generate more cash from, from securitization. This also had the negative side effect of causing many of these institutions to lower their lending standards to keep the game moving quickly. Pooling together loans also made it harder for investors and banks to know the details of all the loans that made up these securities. But there was more money available and more risk in the system. After the crisis began, markets for securitization froze because investors were no longer willing to buy up these securities because they were worried about risk. TALF is designed to bring these investors back into the market by passing the risk to the taxpayers. In this report, we look at two questions to try to figure out whether the program is likely to work. First, is the TALF program well designed to encourage investors to participate? Second, even if the program is well designed, is it likely to have a significant impact on access to credit for small businesses and consumers? Let's start by looking at the questions about the effectiveness of the TALF program. The first question is whether the TALF program is well designed to attract investors to buy these asset-backed securities. Now, investors are putting up a small amount of the purchase price, with the taxpayers putting up the money for the rest. If the securities go up in value, the investors can put a large amount of the profits in their pockets. If the securities decline in value, investors can give up their part of the purchase price and leave the taxpayers stuck with the rest of the losses. Sounds like a great deal for the investors. But there are also some reasons why investors might not want to participate in the program. There are restrictions on the sale of securities bought with TALF loans, so investors are locked into their investments for a number of years. Uh, also, investors may have to pay a higher interest rate on TALF loans than they could get elsewhere. Participants in the TALF program may also have to agree to certain conditions about how they do business, like limits on how they pay their executives. And there's some fear that additional restrictions could be added in the future. On balance, because only a small number of institutions have taken advantage of the program, it's not clear at this point whether the program is well designed to attract investors. The second issue is whether any securitization program like TALF, no matter how well designed, is likely to help small businesses and families. We learned at our Milwaukee hearing in late March, which uh, you can read more about on our website, which is www.cop.senate.gov, that small businesses are having trouble getting new loans. But it's not clear that the reason for this problem is that banks don't have enough money to lend. 
if there's less lending because uh, the banks think that the businesses are not credit worthy, uh, or if uh, the businesses have decided they don't want to borrow as much, then the TALF program is not going to fix those problems. More importantly, small business loans are generally not securitized anyway. So increasing securitization through TALF is not likely to be an important part of reviving small business lending. Figuring out whether or not a program like TALF will have a meaningful impact on consumer lending is even harder. Even before this crisis, families were overloaded with debt and had very little savings to help deal with the additional pressures of the downturn. Now, they face stagnant wages, rising unemployment, losses in the stock market, and falling home values. It's not clear that families can or should take on more debt. Besides, the reduction in total lending is small. It just takes us back to the level of lending during the boom year of 2007. The point is that a lot of people in finance have been talking about asset securitization, but consumers don't seem to have been so strongly affected which makes the impact of a program like TALF harder to figure out. There's no doubt that increasing access to credit for small businesses is essential to getting our economy back on track, although that's less clear for consumers and it's less clear how much help TALF can provide. We hope that this report on the major issues arising out of the Treasury's TALF initiative helps Congress and the American public better understand the potential benefits and the limitations of this program.